Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Here I am in University College, Oxford. This is the Radcliffe Quadrangle, or Radcliffe Quad as we call it for short. And you can see it's very much the same design as the main quad. However, this is uh, 18th century. It takes its name from Dr. John Radcliffe, and you see him up there uh, wearing that curious cap. So uh, John Radcliffe came to UNIV, this college, as an undergraduate uh, in the uh, uh, 17th century. And those days people didn't study a subject as such. They just did their degree in general. Um, they studied most subjects through Latin. Even if it was biology or something or law, you'd be studying through Latin. So they did a mix and gather of, of subjects, a bit like people do in the, in, in the United States today. Um, so he could do some uh, natural philosophy, we'd call it science. Um, obviously classics, Latin, then ancient Greek, but as I, say, as I say, even the science, you'd be learning through Latin usually. Some history, geography, whatever, uh, perhaps some foreign languages, mathematics. One of the few things they did not study was English, because English was a peasant language, it was ephemeral, and anything worthwhile was written in Latin. Remember, Latin was the international language, certainly of academe. Um, and so after that, he qualified as a doctor. Um, so doctors were often educated at um, hospitals who ran their own lectures and their own medical courses as well as the preclinical stage. Um, so but the, the most distinguished doctors, as in the snobbiest ones, would have a degree first before going to hospital medical school. And uh, he was perhaps the most celebrated doctor in the realm. And uh, he was the king's doctor uh, in the late 17th century, particularly of Charles II. So it was the height of fashion to have uh, Dr. Radcliffe as your physician. Um, and uh, he made a bundle of money. Some people thought it was not quite gentlemanly to be a doctor because it was a bit too hands-on. Had, one had to sully oneself. And it was largely relied on the description of the symptoms, not physical examination, which was seen as too much of an intrusion on a gentleman's dignity and in, in unthinkable on a female patient. Um, so, yeah, he was elected Member of Parliament for Buckingham. In this, he kept good company. Sir John Burko currently sits for Buckingham and uh, Robert Maxwell, Captain Bob, he of the pension fund pillaging, also represented that same constituency for Labour way back in the 60s. So Radcliffe there, he is um, wearing some sort of a gown, an academic gown. He's got a snake wound around his walking stick, like Aeschylus, as in squeezing the um, fangs, milking it for venom, with which one can produce anti-venom. That's a symbol of medicine. And so um, if you're a valetudinarian, but very solvent, you could summon him to your bedside because it said many people feigned sickness in order to summon him because they so valued him for his acerbic wit and his convivial company. Um, he was said to be a very affable and humorous chap. So he donated lots of money for this college to extend itself, build this quad. So he one quad till then, astonishingly, because remember, there'd only be like a hundred people or something at the college. They could all fit comfortably into the chapel, all undergraduates it was, it were required to go, all the fellows, that's the lecturers, um, because worship was an essential part of university life back then. And he also had the Radcliffe camera named in his honour because he gave money for that huge library to be built. So that is the Radcliffe quad and their undergraduate rooms around here. And my one in my second year was there those three windows, could you believe it? What a magnificent place I had to live as undergraduate. You wouldn't get that in almost any other university in the world. It's now offices, sadly. I was far better accommodated at that age than I was in my adult life. Well, how I squandered the golden opportunities that were bought for me at such a dear price.